Electrical supply has to meet demand, but these two variables fluctuate considerably throughout the day. Undersupplied and you create massive problems such as brownouts or even complete blackouts. Oversupplied leads to energy loss and wasted input costs. Renewable power sources even face a bigger problem, since most of these are intermittent, meaning the supply fluctuates to even a higher degree in some cases. And unfortunately this leads to billions of dollars lost at a global scale. Now if you wanted to solve both the renewable and storage problem, you would probably go with hydropower and even water pump storage. And yes, theoretically this is the most efficient way to store energy for indefinite durations. However, this doesn't work for every type of economy, especially for smaller grids or isolated areas with environmental regulations. Now typically outside of hydro, energy is usually stored through chemical batteries, but these are relatively inefficient due to low energy densities and limited life cycles. Unfortunately, as of right now, batteries do not have anywhere near the energy densities compared to non-renewable sources such as diesel, gas, and even coal. So there will be a hybrid system for probably many years to come. This has created a lot of alternative storage systems which are pretty unique and some of them are just completely bizarre. This leads us to one of the most advanced battery systems out there which is called the cryogenic battery. This basically uses a cryogenic cycle and only a few projects are trying to exploit this type of storage with high view leading with their 250 megawatt hour plant in Carrington, England. Now this particular plant compresses air, cools it down to minus 196 degrees Celsius in a low pressure vessel. It is stored and then eventually exposed to ambient temperatures to cause rapid regasification and a 700 time fold expansion thus driving a turbine and generating power. It can hold the compressed air for weeks, potentially months. Now obviously this type of system is far from being 100% efficient and there's quite a bit of debate on whether or not this system is affordable due to the input costs and the infrastructure involved. Nevertheless, it would be really interesting to see if they could sell liquid nitrogen at one of these stations. Now a simple concept, but difficult to execute is gravity energy storage, otherwise known as the gravity battery. This would typically use some type of motor generator, which winches a weight to a certain height with power input. Once the grid needs power, brakes are released, and the weight drops, thus transferring power to the generator and to the grid. Now Graphicity is one of these companies which is demonstrating this type of storage, with their two 27 ton weight tower. The rig is 50 feet high and is capable of producing 250 kilowatts. They plan to build a 20 megawatt unit and this will have a high degree of output power and duration. This would be able to generate full power for two and a half hours or five megawatts over five hours. Theoretically, this would be able to last for years and you would have variability in power output. You have to consider the heavy reinforcement involved with these types of buildings and you would obviously have power inefficiencies due to inertia change. Now another controversial project that I'm just going to briefly mention is Energy Vault and their commercial demonstrator. Now this involves very heavy bricks and concentric rings. It would basically lower bricks to build an outer rig and discharge energy. So it's pretty much one Jenga puzzle. Obviously, there would be a lot of inefficiencies created with this system. So what is a proven and tested method for alternative energy storage? Well, one of the best ways to do this is through flywheel energy storage. This mechanical battery has been around for some time and it simply utilizes a flywheel to maintain rotational energy in a system. So basically the motor spins up the flywheel when energy is being supplied and then slows down and discharges to supply power to the grid. Cutting edge systems are made out of composites and can spin up to 50,000 RPM in a vacuum. The latest flywheels are also magnetically levitated so they can last for a very long time and theoretically they could last up to years. Now obviously there would be a limitation to the flywheel size and the RPM that you can spin it up to. So you would probably need multiple flywheels in order to generate megawatts of power. Many satellites actually use flywheel systems for both positioning and energy storage. This type of system would also be very useful for off-world applications, where input solar energy is intermittent. Ultimately they are one of the best storage systems out there. But higher efficiency designs are expensive and they are not really practical for everyday applications.
The last storage system I will mention in this video is the flow battery. This system is a type of electrochemical cell where energy is provided by two chemical components dissolved in liquids. These liquids are pumped into a central membrane. This provides ion exchange. These types of batteries have excellent longevity, but they provide considerably less power when compared to conventional batteries. The hydrogen lithium variant would probably provide the most energy density, but then again it might be more feasible to run a fuel cell. Anyways, Lockheed Martin has built their own version of this type of flow battery, and it's basically a 25 megawatt hour system which can discharge at full nominal power for up to 5 hours. Once again, it might be suitable for smaller applications, but it's not going to meet high energy demands. So once again, there are tons of new battery designs coming out. We always have to be skeptical of new and bold claims. It's highly probable we will not immediately see anything revolutionary with battery energy densities. However, the future is very unpredictable, and it's going to be really interesting to see how far batteries actually advance in the next 10 years. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.